In this installment, we're going to be going with the MLB slate for Sunday, July 7th. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for our July 7th MLB slate we got going on on Sunday. But before we deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mets That's Chef D. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon. Right now, we're at the homepage of the YouTube channel, currently at 6.79 thousand subscribers. This is the road to 10K, and we are well on the way because you guys are showing up each and every single day. Uh, so, guys, continue. If you're already subscribed, to like and comment. That helps the YouTube algorithm so we can grow to a broader audience. If you're not subscribed right now, you're absolutely missing out on the community that we're building on YouTube and on patreon all right now if you want to sign up for that patreon i already posted the mlb future bet so if you want to find out what my um prediction is for this year's world series you sign up right now for the mlb future bet if you want to have the daily access to the daily bets you sign up for that patreon link down below and if you want access to that chat that goes off 24 7 you sign up for that patreon link provided down below i'm so excited to announce i am partner with betstamp and sign up experts to provide you guys with an easier way to sign up with any sportsbook in your area if you go to the link in the description down below you will be directed to this page you see here it automatically displays all available sports books in your area plus their current promotions. For example, you can take the plays given in this video and apply it to any other sports books you don't currently have and reap the rewards. Now let's get into the slate. First up on the slate for Sunday, we're in Nationals Park here, Washington, 42 and 47, going up against the St. Louis Cardinals, 46 and 42. Looking at the current odds right now, we have the St. Louis Cardinals as slight road favorites here, minus 125 on the money line, with the comeback of the Nationals at a plus 105. Total runs are set at nine, all right? For the public bet percentage, 73% of the bets on the Cardinals, but the sharp money and the public on the opposite side here, 65% of the money coming in on the national. So very split here. More money, more sharps coming in on that side of the nationals. So this is a public dog here. Um, for the total runs, 83% of the bets and 78% of the money towards the over nine runs here. Looking at the starting pitching matchup, Kyle Gibson, six and three with a 3.88 ERA. Going up against DJ Hers, one and two with a 4.67 ERA. Now, Kyle Gibson has been solid this year. On the road, he pitches much better with a 3.14 ERA. Um, against righties, very strong numbers here. A 1.08 whip. The, the K rate against righties as well is 27%. The batting average is at a 172. Um, excuse me. The home run per nine was 1.08. The whip is 0.92. The BABIP at 207. The XFIP at 291. So strong numbers across the board. He does give up some hits here to lefties. And that's where the Nationals could get towards him. He's going to see four to five lefties in this lineup here of the Nationals. All right, DJ Hers, on the other hand, he has some concerns against the lefties and righties. Very erratic. He has very good strikeout stuff um, in that 30% range to lefties and righties. So that's where he gets the majority of his outs. But he gives up uh, a lot of home runs, okay? To lefties, a 1.93 home run per nine, a batting average of 286, a whip at 1.50. Against righties, the home run per nine is much higher at 2.01. The whip at a 1.34 and the X whip at a 3.36. So the way the Cardinals are get to DJ Hurd are going to be home runs. So definitely um, look at for home run pops for the for the Cardinals. I think this spot it sounds like an over spot, but I'm going to slightly lean towards the under uh, runs here. DJ Hurd does pitch better at home, so he does have some stronger performances here. And like I said, Kyle Gibson has been fine this year. Not really a um, you know a lot of big 
wild blow up spots here. So under nine runs and give me the Cardinals here. I think they uh, those power bats come through. I'm going to stick with the bet percentage and not stick with the public here um, with the underdog. Give me the favorite Cardinals on the money line. In the Great American Small Park here, Cincinnati Reds, 42 and 47. Going to be against the Detroit uh, Tigers here, 41 and 48. For the odds on this particular game, Tigers are road favorites, minus 140, with the comeback of the Cincinnati Reds at a plus 115. Total run set at 8. So we got a low total here in this game, and this is in Cincinnati, okay? So for the public bet percentage, 71% of the bets on the Tigers, but a very similar um, looking line here with, from that Nationals cards game here. We got 87% of the money on the Reds, so public dog here even more. Um, on with the Sharps and the public all over the Cincinnati Reds. Total runs, 88% of the bets and 94% of the money towards the over, excuse me, the over eight runs. Uh, Tariq Scoble, 9-3 with a 2.45 ERA. Going up against Graham Ashcraft, 5-4 with a 5.45 ERA. Scoble has been absolutely phenomenal this year. Very dominant. He is a candidate for the Cy Young this year. Um, but he is vulnerable on the road, and that's where you see some of his uh, uh, lesser performances. All right, He has a 3.16 ERA on the road, and righties tend to hit um, him on the road as well. A 1.56 home run per nine against righties, a batting average at 252. That's pretty low, but <clears throat> that's where his higher numbers are. The BABIP at a 320 and the XFIP at a 3.06. So if you're looking for a possibility of a home run bat here, um, a righty would be it if you're going up against Tariq Skubal. Ashcraft has been absolutely horrible at home. He has an 8.20 ERA at home, and he's horrible against righties as well. A 1.80 home run per nine, a 368 batting average, a 2.07 whip. A 407 Babbitt and an XFIP at 5.53. So this uh, across the board is a gas can at home. So give me uh, the, the Detroit Tigers here. Love them on the money line. I like them more than the Cardinals here. So Tigers on the money line. Tigers minus one and a half. And how bad? The question is how much runs are they going to score? Give me that over eight runs. I think they really get towards the Tigers open up, which they rarely do. But this is a perfect spot here against Graham Ashcraft and in this uh, ballpark here over eight runs. We have a fun one here in what is this in progressive field Cleveland Guardians 55 and 32 going up against the San Francisco Giants 44 and 46. Uh, Guardians are at home minus 135 on the money line with the comeback of the Giants at a plus 110. Total run set at eight and a half. Uh, public bet percentage, 87% of the bets, 93% of the money on the Guardians. For the total runs, 92% of the bets, 95% of the money towards the over eight and a half. Now, this is the fun part here. Pitching matchup, Hayden Birdsong, 1-0 with a 4.66 ERA, going up against Carlos Carrasco, 3-6 with a 5.21 ERA. This one, um, the over is a definite. So give me, give me, I like, excuse me, let me say this correctly. I really like the over. Okay, I'm going to say it like that. Um, over 8.5 is definitely one of our, our, our top plays here. Birdsong has huge issues against righties. Um, he has a 5.40 home run per nine. Let me say that again. Birdsong has a 5.0 home run per nine, a 368 batting average, a 180 whip, and an XFIP at 6.06. .06. Carrasco has been an absolute gas can all along this year. As of late, he's been pitching better, but still low strikeout numbers, and he's still giving up home runs at a very high rate. So that big bad game uh, uh, for Carrasco is going to come where he's giving up five, six, or seven runs in a game. That's going to be right around the corner yet again. So this spot here, over eight and a half, over eight and a half. And if I had to choose, I will try to play it safe here. Give me the Giants plus one and a half, maybe in a game that's like nine to eight along that range. Maybe the Giants even win. So uh, plus one and a half on the Giants, over eight and a half in total runs. From Target Field, we have the Minnesota Twins, 50 and 39, going against the Houston Astros, 46 and 43. Twins 
home favorites minus 125 with the comeback of the Houston Astros at a plus 105 total run set at nine for the public bet percentage here 88% of the bets 97% of the money um, on the Minnesota twin side for the total runs 94% of the bets 98% of the money towards the over nine runs all right starting pitching matchup here Spencer Arigetti four and seven with a 6.13 ERA Going up against Simeon Woods Richardson, 3-1 with a 3.52 ERA. For Arigetti, he's like the most hot and cold pitcher um, so far this year. Absolutely insane, okay? He was horrible at the beginning of the year. Slowly, he was getting better and better. Um, and now, at least, he's been having some starts where he's been phenomenal. But every you don't, now you don't know when that bad game is going to come. All right? You really don't. Um, and technically, he is worse on the road with a 7.12 ERA. All right. But if you're looking at his game log, there are spots where he's been absolutely phenomenal. He's put three or four starts in a row together where he's been fine. And then he gives up a big game. All right. So he is a total wild card here when it comes um, to this matchup here because twins have a very, very powerful offense. And on the other side, we have Woods Richardson. He's the opposite of Arrogetti. He's so consistent, super reliable, uh, not much weaknesses. He does give up some uh, power to righties with a 1.35 home run per nine. But that's literally the only concern when it comes to Simeon Woods Richardson. So in this spot here, I'm going to have to go with the home team. Give me the Minnesota Twins on the money line. Um, and give me, if I'm choosing an over and under, I do expect the, the Twins to hit the Astros, but I don't expect the Astros to really hit up the Twins. So give me the under nine runs. And like I said, money line Minnesota Twins. In the Globe Life Field here, we have the Texas Rangers, 41 and 48. Going up against the Tampa Bay Rays, 44 and 45. Uh, looking at the current odds right now, Texas Rangers are home favorites, minus 140, with the comeback of the Tampa Bay Rays at a plus 115. Uh, for the total runs, it is set at eight. Uh, public bet percentage, 85% of the bets, 97% of the money on the Rangers here. And for the total runs, 89% of the bets, 88% of the money towards the over eight runs. Uh, in this starting pitching matchup, Zach Littell, three and five with a 3.94 ERA. Going against Nate Eovaldi, five and three with a 3.15 ERA. Zach Littell, every time I see him, I want to attack him. He has not been good against both lefties and righties. He's given up an over, over 300 batting average to both lefties and righties. Um, and a whip. If you're looking at righties, the whip is at 1.32. So some cause of concern here when you're looking at the bats of Texas uh, Rangers here uh, for Zach Littell. Um, he should be in a spot where he's probably going to be giving up a lot of hits here against these Rangers. Nathan Eovaldi has been phenomenal and absolutely great at home. A 1.92 ERA at home. And uh, if you're looking at his average, below uh, below 200 average to both lefties and righties. And the whip is below one to both lefties and righties. So when you got Nathan Eovaldi on the mound at home, he has absolutely been phenomenal. Give me the Rangers uh to take this game here on the money line i love that number at minus 140 uh, and if i'm choosing an over under give me the under eight runs in globe life uh that definitely is one of the uh higher hits here an under in globe life field which is crazy because it used to be a hitter's park but they made some alter uh, alterations here and now it is not it's a pitcher's park now uh, in globe life field so under eight in Oakland Coliseum, we have the Athletics here, um, who are 34 and 57, going up against the Baltimore Orioles, 56 and 33. Looking at the current odds right now, Baltimore Orioles, big road favorites, minus 200 on the money line, with the comeback of the Oakland A's at a plus 165 for the total runs set at at eight. Um, public bet percentage, 80% of the bets on the Orioles, but 56% of the money. Um, is coming in on the Oakland Athletics as a public dog here. So Sharps and public here coming in on the, on the Oakland A's uh, with the money, okay? Total runs, 88% of the bets, 96% of the money towards the over eight runs, all right? 
Pitching matchup, Grayson Rodriguez, 10-3 with a 3.45 ERA. Going up against Mitch Spence, who is 5-4 with a 4.15 ERA. Grayson Rodriguez this year has been great um, at home, but it's a different story on the road. He has a 4.60 ERA at home. I mean, excuse me, on the road. His home run per nine versus righties is a 1.80. The batting average is a 295. The whip is at a 1.75 and the XFIP at a 4.33. So issues against righties here. And he's going to see around six righties in that Oakland Athletics lineup. Uh, Mitch Spence, on the other hand, he handles lefties well. He's a right-handed pitcher. Um, but he does have some raised numbers against righties. A 286 batting average, a 1.40 whip, XFIP at 4.4. And um, he's going to see around four righties here. So both of these guys struggle a little bit um, against righties. It's more on the side of Grayson Rodriguez because it's a huge difference. Home run road splits. So um, in this particular game here, give me the plus one and a half for the Oakland Athletics and give me the over. The top play is going to be the over eight runs. I think there's going to be plenty of runs on both sides here. Uh, and I'm going to play it safe with the Oakland Athletics with that plus one and a half. All right. In Petco Park here, we have the San Diego Padres, 49 and 43. Going up against the Arizona Diamondbacks, 43 and 45. Uh, looking at the current odds right now, Padres are home favorites, minus 160. With the comeback of the Diamondbacks at a plus 135. Total run set at 8. For the public bet percentage, 91% of the bets, 92% of the money um, on the side of the Padres. So strong numbers on both sides, bets and money for the Padres. 95% of the bets and 94% of the money towards the over eight runs. All right. For the uh, pitching matchup here, Reen Nelson, uh, five and six with a 5.42 ERA. Going up against Dylan Cease here, seven and seven with a 4.24 ERA. Uh, Reen Nelson, um, he has home road splits as well. Um, worse at home in pitching um, in Arizona, but a little bit better on the road. 4.26. ERA on the road. He still has issues versus righties on the road as well. Um, with a uh, oh, okay, so his issues on the road is against righties, but the uh, his issues at home are against lefties. So it's a weird um, contrast here when you're looking at Nelson's numbers. Um, but for against righties on the road, it's a 1.96 whip. It's a 343 batting average, and the XFIP is at a 5.14. So those are going to be cause of concern here against the right-handed bats uh, against Padres. Um, and, and this team here absolutely tattoos right-handed pitching as well. So that's going to be a strong suit for the Padres. Dylan Cease has been uh, phenomenal this year. He does give up some power to lefties with his home run per nine at a 1.27. So those are going to be some question marks there. I think it's a better spot here for the Padres, how they dominate right-handed pitching. Give me the Padres on the money line. And for the over-under, give me the over eight runs in this one. Last but not least, we have the Yankees here, 55 and 36, going against the Boston Red Sox, uh, 48 and 40. Looking at the line right here, Yankees are slight favorites, minus 150 with the comeback of the Red Sox at a plus 125. Total run set at eight and a half. Uh, for the public bet percentage here, 84% of the bets, 84% of the money on the Yankees for the total runs and 92% of the of the bets and 91% of the money towards the over eight and a half runs. Uh, in this pitching matchup, it should be a pitching duel here. So we'll see. It should be a pitching duel because on one side, we have someone that has pitched well this year, but he is struggling mightily in Lewis Gill. He's nine and four with a 3.41 ERA. He has had back to back to back bad starts in a row. Um, could this be a spot where he finally bounced back? He already had a good game earlier in the season against the Red Sox as well. So this could be a little bit of medicine for him. That's going to be a question mark there. Cutter Crawford on, on the other side has been solid this year. He's even better on the road with a 2.70 ERA. He does give up some home runs to lefties with a, five, a one point, uh, a 1.82 home run per nine. Um, that's his issue. Other than that, he's been pretty solid. He should see around two lefties in this lineup, so not that many lefties as well. So I'm going with the under eight and a half runs in this game here between the Red Sox and Yankees. If I had to choose a winner here, 
this this Yankee team finally got a win. Um, they've been struggling as of late, and they haven't won a series in a little bit of a while. I might be leaning towards that plus one and a half with the Red Sox here. I expect a close game anyway, so give me the Red Sox plus one and a half um, in this one, and definitely the under eight and a half runs. Those are going to be our selections for the Sunday slate on July 7th. So let me know in that comment section down below, what are your plays for Sunday? What are your props as well? Um, if you want to sign up for that Patreon, get connected for the daily plays for the future bets as well. You go down below to that link for the Patreon down below. And I'll be back with another video very soon. Uh, peace out.